Hello friends, this video on Atoms Part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched Part 1 and Part 2 before going ahead with Part 3. So thereafter came up some other atomic models. As I mentioned in the first slide, that after Dalton's atomic theory came up another atomic theories. The first one being the Thomson model of atom. It came somewhere around 1897. Thereafter came the Rutherford's nuclear model of atom around 1909, which was again followed by Bohr's model of atom in 1912. And this was followed by the quantum model of atom. So these are the four atomic models which we will discuss in this lesson. So quantum, atom, quantum model of atom is the one which is presently accepted and is considered to be the I mean real model, right? So let us first look at the Thomson model of atom. What did this model say? This model stated that an atom possesses a spherical shape in which the positive charge is uniformly distributed. So according to Thomson's model, inside the atom, atom is spherical in shape and inside the sphere we have positive charge distributed uniformly everywhere. So the positive charge is present everywhere inside the atom. And what about the negative charge? That is the electrons. The electrons are embedded into it so as to give the most stable electron electrostatic configuration. That means as such if you look at this uh, figure it will be clear to you. That means this pink colored sphere has positive charge distributed all over it. I mean the, the entire sphere is a dense positive charge sphere and the electrons are embedded somewhere and the electrons are embedded in such a way that it gives it a stable arrangement. So this was Thomson's model. So this model was often called as plum pudding model or uh, raisin pudding model or watermelon model. It was known as watermelon model because it, it, it resembled watermelon. I mean if you think of it, if you look at uh, the watermelon, how does it look like? It has the small seeds embedded here and there, right? So similarly electrons were embedded here and there inside the atom. So that is why it got these kind of names like plum pudding, raisin pudding because inside the pudding, that pudding is nothing but the uniform distribution of positive charge. And inside that pudding, you have plum here and there. Similarly, you have raisins here and there. So that is why this Thomson's model of atom was known by all these alternative names. This model could successfully explain the overall neutrality of the atom, but was not consistent with the results of nature experiments. That means why this model was successfully accepted by people? Because it could explain that even though atom consists of positive charge as well as negative charge, but still overall the atom is neutral. So it could explain that. But it could not explain some of the results which were, which, which were discovered later. Because this model just spoke about how the positive charge and negative charge are distri is distributed inside the atom. But later when proton, neutron, everything were discovered separately, then there were certain results which could not be explained by this model of atom. So even Thomson's model of at at the atom could not be a big hit. Well, make a note of this point that neutron and protons were not discovered at this time when Thomson had proposed this model. So right now people were just talking about the model of the atom and since electron was discovered so people were talking about electrons. So they people were considering that since electrons are negatively charged particle there has to be some positively charged particle. So they, they never named it as proton or neutron or something because they, they were not discovered by that time. So here people were only talking about positive charge atom and electron. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.